book, United States Exploring Expedition, during the years 1838, 1839, 1840, 1841, 1842, under the command of Charles Wilkes, USN, Ethnography and Philology by Horatio Hale, Philologist of the Expedition, again from 1846, Smithsonian Libraries, and we go to page 199, and it says here, the Californian division. The natives of this class are chiefly distinguished by their dark color, their dark color. Those of Northern or Upper California are a shade browner than the Oregon Indians, while some tribes in the peninsula are said to be nearly black, nearly black, so-called black, so-called Negroes. In other respects, they have the physiognomy of their race, broad faces, a low forehead, and lank coarse hair. What I wanted to show you guys, you know, what it's telling you here right away, right? Dark colors, nearly black. All right, so we continue. We're here in the uh, California Farmer Journal of Useful Science. It says here, San Francisco, California, Friday morning, February 17th. 1860 all right i want to show you guys something very interesting this was not easy to find all right and we're going to zoom in to this part right here and it says here california notes by alex s taylor the indianology of california second series continued from the farmer on october 26 1860 sacramento indians number two all right, the Indians of the Sacramento Valley and those of the Northern Sierra Nevada and of the mountains of the west of Sacramento. It says here, the California Indians are in stature short, but they are well and stoutly formed. Their features are coarse, broad, and of a dark chocolate color. A dark chocolate color. All right, dark chocolate color. And just in case you don't know what dark chocolate uh, looks like, I can show you guys dark chocolate. That was actually not even the raw dark, right? Whereas it can get darker, dark chocolate, dark chocolate, right? Dark chocolate, what you mean dark chocolate complexion? <laughs> dark chocolate features, dark chocolate. Let's go back. Their features are coarse, broad, and of a dark chocolate color. Their hair is black, heavy, and matted. Say what? Rewind. Pull up. <laughs> it says their features are coarse, broad, and of a dark chocolate color. Their hair is black, heavy, and matted. Matted, heavy hair. Thick, matted. With a chocolate color complexion. Again. 
where in this other book is called A Voyage of Discovery into the South Sea and Barren Straits for the purpose of exploring a Northeast Passage undertaken in the years 1815 to 1818 at the expense of His Highness the Chancellor of the Empire Count Romansov and the ship Rurik under the command of the Lieutenant in the Russian Imperial Navy Otto von Kotzebue. This is Volume 1, 1821. We're on page 282 of the book. It says here, the coast of California is inhabited by so many tribes that there are frequently in the mission Indians of more than 10 different races. Listen, each of which has its own language. Many different nations here with different languages. Stop grouping everybody. Stop generalizing. As we were leaving the mission, we were surprised by two groups of Indians, which were also composed of different nations. They came in military array, that is quite naked, and painted with gay colors or happy or bright colors, right? The heads of the most were adorned with feathers and other finery. Some of them, however, had their long disordered hair covered with down and their faces dubbed in the most frightful manner. There is nothing remarkable in their war dance and I only regretted that I did not understand the words of their song. The physiognomy of these Indians, all right, listen to this, is ugly, stupid and savage. All right, that's the hijack because they're, again, their prejudiced views. Otherwise, they are well-formed, tolerably tall, and of a dark brown complexion. Dark brown complexion. Again, dark brown complexion. The women are short and very ugly. They have much of the Negro in their countenance. They have what? Much of the Negro in their countenance. Are you guys hearing? Dodge the hijack with all their negative insults of these indigenous people. Remember, these are the colonizers' views. The women are short again, but they have much of the Negro in their countenance, only that a Negro head may be called handsome in the comparison with theirs. They are principally distinguished from the Negroes by their very long, smooth, and coal black hair. All right? Negro in their countenance. All right, so we continue. Now we're going to uh, basically read uh, from the same book, uh, but this is actually volume three now instead of volume one. This is the same book. We're going to go to a different part here. Again, the same book we just read. This is just volume three. I'm on page 47 of this book, and it says here, in their general appearance, they resemble each other except the Tosholovonians, whom we soon learned to distinguish by their marked physiognomy, which the fathers could not do. They have all a very savage look and are of a very dark color, a very dark color, a very dark color. <laughs> so Dodge the Hijack, they say, oh, they have a savage look, oh, all of them. You mean you're afraid of them? You're afraid of their look, huh? That's why you're saying they're savage, huh? Their flat, broad countenance with large staring eyes is shaded by black, thick, all right? Thick, long, and smooth hair. Thick, long, and smooth hair. Thick hair and very dark color complexion. The gradations of color or the different shades of color in these different nations the languages which are radically different from each other, the mode of life, arts, arms, and some of them various lines tattooed about the chin and neck, all right? Tattoos all the way up to the chin and neck. The way in which they paint themselves for war and for dance distinguish the different tribes, all right? The different tribes just here in California alone, all right? You guys paying attention? Again, a very savage look and are of a very dark color. Okay, now we're gonna read from uh, this book, a uh, narrative of a voyage to the Pacific and Bering Straits to cooperate with the polar expeditions performed in His Majesty's ship Blossom under the command of Captain F.W. Bishi, RN, in the years 1825, 1826, 1827, and 1828, 
published by authority of the Lord's Commissioners of the Admiralty in two volumes. This is a volume two, and this was published in 1831. And in regards to uh, the California Indians, we're on page 76 of this book. It says the stature of the Indians which we saw in the missions was by no means diminutive. The Alconis are of a good height, and the Tularios were thought to be generally above the standard of Englishmen. Their complexion is much darker than that of the South Sea Islanders, and their features far inferior in beauty. Okay, this is a major drop right here. If you don't understand why, I'm going to show you. Now, it's telling you that the Indians in California, their complexion is much darker, much darker than that of South Sea Islanders. Who's the South Sea Islanders? Here we are with some South Sea Islanders. And the good thing is we just did, uh, you know, the video of the Southeast Asians and the Indian subcontinent indigenous people and how they truly looked. All right, I want to show you these are South Sea Islanders right here. As you guys can see, these South Sea Islanders probably worked on a sugar plantation in Australia. South Sea Islanders, all right? South Sea Islanders. We're just talking about some South Sea Islanders, all right? South Sea Islanders. So I wanted to show you the picture colorized. I was able to colorize it. You guys see? These are South Sea Islanders, all right? Asians. Yes, that's Asia. There's another picture here. It says group of South Sea Islanders. 1890 all right 1890 so you guys can see and they're very dark complexion people right you guys can take a good look so you can have a clear perspective of what they're using as a reference let's go back to the book again the alconis are of a good height and the tularios were thought to be generally above the standard of englishmen their complexion is much darker okay much darker than that of the South Sea Islanders. All right, you guys understand? Much darker. And these are not Africans. And the South Sea Islanders are also not Africans. You got to break the spell. In their persons, they are extremely dirty, particularly their heads, which are so tashed with wiry black hair that it is only by separating the locks with the hand that it can be got at for the purposes of cleanliness. All right, did you just hear that? Major drop, they got what? They got locks. They're darker than the South Sea Islanders and they got locks in their hair when they're not taken care of, when their hair is not being taken care of. All right, now these people are in missions. Remember that we just read these people are in missions. So who knows what conditions these people are living under? And then you got these writers coming and talking bad about them and describing them in such negative ways, right? But I want you guys to really see what's going on here. These are primary source. Do you guys understand what a primary source is? This is not my ideas. This is not blackwashing. These are primary sources telling you, all right? How much more clear is that? Darker than South Sea Islanders and these people have locks. Okay, now we're in this book. The Wonders of the Yosemite Valley and of California by Professor Neeland. I just wanted to show you that his full name is Samuel Neeland, just in case you're interested. This was printed in 1871. So we're on page uh, 52 of this book. It says here, the Shoshones, Utes, and Paiutes, or Paiutes, are the principal Indian tribes seen along the railroad from Salt Lake to Stockton. In the Yosemite Valley, all right, California, Central California, right? Where is Yosemite Valley? There are the diggers, so-called because in times of scarcity, they subsist on acorns, roots, and ins insects, and their grubs dug from the earth. Though low in the scale of man, they are not the adject creatures generally represented. They are mild, harmless, and singularly honest. Of their honesty, you can have no doubt when you see in the woods and valleys little storehouses raised above inundations and made of bushes, grasses, and stakes in which their acorns and nuts are stored for the winter. They always respect each other's property, 
does arrange, but these repositories have often been broken into and robbed by mischievous and unscrupulous whites. As usual with the American Aborigines, they are more sinned against than sinning. They are very dark colored. Again, they are what? Very, at expression, very dark colored. Remember? Chocolate, dark chocolate, remember? Font of gaudy beads and colors. And expert hunters and fishermen, they will catch a string of tr trout where the eastern angler with his flies and costly outfit, cannot get a bite. They are addicted to intemperance when they can get fire water, all right, liquor, fire water. You already heard ODB, fire water, and the Indians don't mix. But for this and the consequent poverty, misery, and disease, the whites are accountable, all right? Again, Yosemite Valley, Indigenous people, I've shown many images and pictures of them colorized. They are very dark colored and they are so-called Negroes, copper colored tribes of America, indigenous Americans, and they're not Africans. All right, all right. So we are in this book now. Now this was in French guys, all right? Yeah, I found a lot of stuff in, uh, in different languages and I've had all these books here all these links saved all these years and i'm like whoa i gotta start reading these books i've been storing these links for years and you know little by little we can get through them together it's no problem now it says here voyage de la perouse autor de mundi publique confirming du a decree <laughs> all right you guys know so it's written in 1797 it's a voyage of uh, this de la perouse 1797 now we're on page uh, 249, and they're talking about the Indians in Monterey, California. Monterey, Monterey, as you guys can see here, Monterey. But a lot of the French people listening right now can verify what I'm going to say. Down here it says, their color, le color es tres approchante. It's approaching. Their color is approaching. De or the, right? Approaching. Their color is approaching what? Cele des Negres, that of the Negroes. Don't les chevaux ne son point les nus. All right, just want to show you guys, I ain't making it up. And I grabbed the words, exact words, and I came here to translate it, detected French, as you guys can see, and it says in English, their color is very close to that of Negroes, whose hair is not woolly. All right, Negroes, whose hair is not woolly. Talking about the Indians of Monterey. You guys can pause the video and go verify that it's the exact same words. I'm not adding anything to this. All right. All right. So we're back in the book and we're going to go to another part of the book. And we're going to try to grab this whole paragraph right here. Hit copy. Come to the translator. Copy. Paste. And it says here, the color of these Indians, which is that of the Negroes. In this case, it's not that approaching. It's literally telling you it's just like the Negroes. The color of these Indians, which is that of the Negroes, religious house, their warehouses, which are built of bricks and plastered with mortar, the area of the ground on which the grain is trodden, the oxen, the horses, everything reminded us of a dwelling in Saint Dominique or in any other colony. They said it looked just like they were in Haiti. They felt like they were in Haiti, Saint Domingue. The men and women are assembled at the sound of the bell. A monk takes them to work, to church, and to all the exercises. See, they're living like servants there in these missions. We say it with difficulty. The resemblance is so perfect that we have seen men and women loaded with iron, others in block D. And finally, the noise of weapons could have struck our ears. This punishment being also admitted, but exercised with little. All right. And it keeps going. So you hear what's going on? These people are being treated just like the ones in the stories of these slave narratives. You know, these evil slave masters whipping the slaves. And again, these are people of dark complexion, dark, as it says here, the color of these Indians, which is that of the Negroes. All right. You guys overstanding. This is from a French book. And anybody who speaks French can verify this right now. You know, you can pause the video yourself and uh, translate it if you like yourself. All right, this paragraph. And that's what it says, okay? 
I hope you guys see how clear it is. This is a second video on California tribes, and I got a lot more just in California alone. And I'll keep showing you guys how many more books. And these are books I've never read to you guys before. Even in my series from Indigenous American to African American, which is 22 parts. Do you understand how much primary sources, historical facts, genealogy we got? All the work and research is beyond a doubt. And if you're still stuck in Pan-African beliefs, you know, that's your choice. Cognitive dissonance is a real thing. You guys need to break the spell. But I really appreciate all my real followers, all the people who's been here along the way, all the journey, through all the research. Thank you for sticking around, being patient with me. We're learning together. I appreciate you guys, all the support. Thanks again for uh, tuning in one more time. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. I got a lot more coming. Hope you guys have a great weekend that's coming up. Shabbat Shalom. Many blessings to everyone out there. Pura Vida. Much love and respect again. Hawaii.